Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this new video. Uh, this video uh, series of videos will explain uh, some uh, bases uh, obstetrics and gynecology, internal medicine, surgery, and pediatrics. Before I uh, explain them, um, I want to explain to you how you can get these bases for free. They are the most updated bases for crop questions and they will help you a lot in. Uh, studying subject wise so only subjects uh, if you uh, want to start with this so you go to crocology.com which is the website i recommend for studying for croc 2 and you go to english medicine then croc 2 then go to the after you make of course a free account and then uh, you go to the subject section again and then you can choose uh, the subject you want uh, to practice so for example obstetrics and gynecology next and then you can uh, practice about 400 only gynecology questions most updated to the latest um, year of um, booklets um, like um, like previous uh, bases have had in this feature so um, make sure to uh, take advantage of this feature and uh, let's start the explanation okay we will uh, explain uh, surgery base here uh, there is a 43 year old patient has right sided deep vein thrombosis or the iliofemoral segment three years ago and now he's suffering from the sense of heaviness edema of the lower right extremity moderate edema of the shin and brown in duration of the skin or in the lower third of the shin dilation of the superficial shin veins are present shin means leg what is the most uh, probable diagnosis so what they mean from after the uh, objectively moderate edema of the shin uh, dilation of superficial veins they mean this appearance here dilation of superficial veins in the leg uh, this appearance we call that varicose veins it's dilation of the superficial veins of the leg. It happens because of uh, accumulation of blood in these veins, because the blood cannot go upwards through the uh, venous uh, system. Uh, that maybe there is obstruction here, so the blood will go back here, so and the blood accumulates in the superficial system. This is the superficial system. This is the deep venous system. And this left side on the right side this is the uh, superficial system so what causes one of the causes that the super, uh, blood accumulates in the superficial veins this part is defect in the deep system there is a deep vein system defect like thrombosis for example here there is obstruction here this pushes the blood to other areas and dilates this place leading to this appearance so if you look at the disease varicose veins uh, the pathogens is a reflux of blood through the vein due to incompetent venous valves so uh, after some time because of this accumulation of blood here these valves which should keep the blood upwards it should like push it upwards and when it goes backwards it should close because of accumulation of this a lot of amount of blood these valves will fail and accumulate uh, blood will accumulate here and not go up anyway one of the causes of varicose veins is deep vein thrombosis which is what we we spoke about it's uh, if there is a, a thrombus in the deep vein system causing the blood will accumulate in the superficial vein system leading to varicose veins and they will look like this by the superficial veins as you see and when it's caused by deep vein thrombosis we call it post thrombotic disease we call it in this case varicose veins that are caused that are caused by deep vein thrombosis post thrombotic disease so they are after deep vein thrombosis post thrombotic disease and yes this is it and so this question the answer should be post thrombotic thrombophilipatic syndrome varicose veins because the patient had deep vein thrombosis three years ago Next, we have a 34-year-old patient who was delivered to the first aid center with open fracture of the lower leg bones. Uh, upon examination, bleeding blood flows in the pulsating bursts. 
so uh, what action should be uh, taken so he had a fracture of the lower leg and he has bleeding in the form of pulsing pulsating verse so we need to uh, define uh, uh, determine the type of bleeding here is it arterial is it venous arterial bleeding is bright red blood and pulsating like because it's arterial Ar arteries have like pulse right so the bleeding will have also like be pulsating not continuous like in the venous blood so uh, this is why this arterial bleeding and arterial bleeding should be stopped by a tourniquet which is this device here or this like uh, technique and uh, for example there is a bleeding here and the tourniquet should be placed above the knee um, and tightly uh, closed so that blood don't go to this leg and bleeding can be stopped so this is how we stop a uh, bleeding arterial bleeding uh, there should be um, uh, applying that uh, tourniquet to the thigh proximally to the place of hemorrhage and deliver the patient to operating room like proximally to the place of hemorrhage uh, like here and not here for example okay like close to the place of hemorrhage in the thigh area of course not in the leg um, it should be in the thigh area but not distally not high on the thigh low on the thigh it's called proximal and uh, this is how tourniquet is applied proximal to the wound above the wound not below it it doesn't make sense because we need blood to stop blood supply to stop this area so we apply it above the wound uh, on one bone uh, meaning that uh, um, we know we have the fe fe uh, fe uh, femur bone right and then after that the tibia and the fibula uh, on the leg so tonic should be applied on one bone not on uh, on, a, on on the leg which has two bones feb uh, fibula and the tibia femur bone only which is at the thigh right uh, and here how to check if it's applied correctly so in this way we, we can say the answer is a Next, we have a uh, male patient complains of acute pain in his right side, irradiating to the right thigh and the crotch. The patient claims also to have frequent urination with urine, which resembles a meat slob in color. The patient has no previous history of this condition, cause of vertebral tenderness on the right, positive Stilinski symptom, what is the most likely diagnosis? The key word is the type of the pain, pain here, pain in the right side, irradiating to the right thigh, right? Uh, it's this type of pain. Okay, and this type of pain is characteristic for stones in the urinary tract, urinary tract stones, because it resembles the urinary tract pathway. This, uh, this like projection of the pain. So if we have here stone, the kidney, right? Then kidney stone pain will be from the uh, from the lumbar area, which is this area here radiating to the inguinal area or groin or thigh or iliac area so this area here uh, this is like specific type of pain for the uh, urinary stone uh, called urolithiasis right um, acute pyelonephritis will have only pain in the lumbar area they will tell you only pain in the lumbar area without irradiating to the thigh or radiating somewhere else so only pain in lumbar area uh, yes, pancreatitis will have pain in the uh, epigastrium radiating to the back, to the back, cholecystitis radiating to the shoulder, to the scapula, appendicitis, uh, pain in the umbilical area radiating to the right iliac area, so from here to here, um, yes, so it's urolithiasis. Okay, now pay attention this is like plural diseases they are very important in croc and they get asked a lot so here we have a patient who was delivered to a surgical department after a road accident with a closed trauma of the chest and right-sided rib fracture the patient was diagnosed with pneumothorax it's indicated to perform a drainage of pleural cavity where to do the drainage uh, pleural puncture should be made uh, 
If we speak about pneumothorax, what is pneumothorax? Pneumo means air, thorax in the chest cavity. So it's air in the chest cavity. It can happen because of injuries, that the, um, there is injury to the chest cavity, and through this injury, air got inside the pleural cavity. So what is the pleural cavity? This is the lung, right? This is around it, the pleura, right? So uh, we, we are speaking about air that is in this area here. If, if this is called pneumothorax. So uh, the treatment in this case will be to drain this air and drainage of this air will happen in the second intercostal space, the space between the second and third rib and uh, at the middle clavicular line. This is the clavicle, right? At the middle of it, if, if we draw a line, right? Downside, then at this line, we put a drainage tube to drain the fluid, uh, sorry, the air, right? So back to the question, the answer should be in the second intercostal space along the middle clavicular line. Uh, we stay in the plural diseases and we look at this question. A 24 year old patient had been delivered to a thoracic department with a chest injury. Uh, he has fracture of the uh, fourth, fifth, and sixth ribs. Three ribs are uh, fractured, and there is fluid in the pleural cavity, not air in this case, fluid. And the puncture, we puncture the chest cavity to see what type of fluid is it, and we see blood clots. So what is the treatment tactics in this case? In this case, what we should do is uh, first of all, the diagnosis. What is the diagnosis here? The diagnosis, if we see in the pl pleural puncture, if we see blood clots, it means we have hemothorax. We have blood in the pleural cavity, right? Called the hemothorax. And um, present blood in the pleural cavity due to trauma. And there will be um, signs, as you see in clinical picture, in the x-ray, you will see presence of horizontal fluid level, meaning that um, back to here, the, the thing I uh, draw, there will be like this f fluid horizontal uh, fluid level, meaning that there is fluid in this area, right, called hemothorax, like here in the x-ray will be like this, and uh, when we do puncture of the pleural cavity, we see bloody fluid, and this test, uh, Rivulus test, there will be coagulation of blood. Uh, it tells us if the blood is coagulating inside this pleural cavity. And this is important for the treatment because we can treat, uh, treat this by draining the blood. If this is uh, not a complicated hemothorax, just blood in the thorax cavity without broken ribs, without uh, clots, uh, then we, uh, we drain this uh, blood, right? We just put a tube and drain it. But if there are clots, blood clots, then this we cannot drain clots. There, there, we, we can drain fluid, but it will be clots cannot be drained, right? It's uh, we we want to open the chest in this case. If there are broken ribs, like three ribs or more, then is this, this cannot be fixed by just drainage. Then we need to open the chest. Okay. Um, then. Um, what is what we call opening the chest thoracotomy thoracotomy this is uh, opening the chest like this to uh, fix the bleeding the ribs and remove the clotted hemothorax so emergency thoracotomy now here we have a different uh, case here we have a woman that fell from the height of uh, 1.5 meters and now she complains of severe thoracic pain on the left and dyspnea. X-ray reveals hydronemothorax, so we have fluid and air in the chest, in the pleural cavity, fluid and air. And um, with fluid level at the seventh rib and the lung collapsed. Okay. Uh, Hemorrhagic fluid was obtained during the thoracic puncture. So we did the puncture and we find blood, okay? And it's fluid without clots. So what treatment tactics can be in this, uh, can be chosen? So here we have uh, also hemothorax, okay? Uh, but 
it's not complicated, right? We don't see here clotted uh, uh, blood. We don't see here broken ribs. That's why we do only drainage. And the drainage here will be in different place than the pneumothorax. Pneumothorax, we drained it in the second intercostal space mid clavicular line, but in the uh, hemothorax, we'll drain in the seventh intercostal space. So the answer here will be thoracocentesis at the seventh intercostal space. Like this. Uh, this question is uh, speaking about weeks after myocardial infarction. Myocardial infarction is the necrosis of the heart, of the part of the heart. Um, a patient developed acute heart pain, dyspnea. The patient condition is extremely grave. There is marked cyanosis of the face. There is swelling and throbbing of the neck veins. Uh, peripheral pulse is absent. Uh, carotid artery uh, pulse is rhythmic. Uh, <clears throat> blood pressure is 60 over 20. Auscultation of the heart uh, sounds reveal muffled sound, percussion, uh, reveal heart borders extension both direction. What is the optimal treatment tactics? Uh, so here we, we need these three symptoms to diagnose. What's happened here is that after myocardial infarction, uh, death of an area of the heart, here the area, let's imagine it's death, this area became weak, right? and it's uh, susceptible to, or there is high risk that this area develops aneurysm, uh, that bulging of the area of the heart, and this aneurysm can rupture, right? Uh, so what we can have is a rupture of this area that was necrosis, and the blood that's in the heart can get around the heart, the space around the heart. What do we call this space? We call it pericardium, okay? So here we have blood around the heart, the same way we have blood around the lung in the pleural cavity, we call it hemothorax, blood around the heart, the pericardium, okay, um, it's called hemopericardium, but what's more important is that, is that to re rec uh, recognize what this blood can do to the heart, it's this blood will, will form like a pressure that prevents the heart from expanding to pump the blood, right, the heart pumps the blood it needs to expand to accommodate all of the blood and then pump it but in case it's surrounded by blood then this blood will form like a pressing force that prevents the blood the heart from expanding right this means that the heart cannot what cannot contract well and cannot uh, receive the same amount of blood from the veins and this leads what is that the blood will not go back to the heart Will accumulate in the veins for example in the neck veins and you will have enlargement of the jugular veins like here see uh, the heart sounds will be muffled because around the heart there is this blood here and if we ascultate the heart then we cannot hear the heart sounds clearly because the heart is surrounded by this blood so we have muffled heart sound distension of jugular veins and low blood pressure because the heart is now having pumping less blood it's restricted by all of this blood around it. It's so pumping less blood to the aorta, so low blood pressure. This is called Bix triad, and it indicates cardiac tamponade, which is the disease here. It's called cardiac tamponade. It's an emergency condition that's characterized by impaired filling of the ventricles due to increasing pressure around the heart. It can happen to myocardial infarction and other things. Um, diagnosed by ECHO. These are all uh, crook questions. Diagnosis. Uh, how to uh, the clinical picture echo will, will, will uh, which is ultrasound of the heart will show expanded heart borders x-ray also can show the same things the treatment is very important we treat it a lot in core questions is to remove this blood right same way we did with hemothorax is to do pericardiosynthesis drainage of the fluid in the pericardium right so like this so the answer here should be uh, of course, we should drain the fluid, right? And to fix the area that is ruptured from the uh, myocardial infarction. So we, we need to do thoracotomy, open the chest as well. So swelling of the neck veins, jugular vein distension, muffled heart sounds, low blood pressure, cardiotamponade. 
Next, we have a patient who, who has, after lifting a load, uh, has experienced a severe pain in the lumbar region. Okay, after lifting something very heavy, he will have pain in the back, in the lumbar region. Spread to the right leg, like this. He had it uh, in the lumbar region, and now it's spreading like this to the right leg. Um, and getting worse when he moves his foot or cuff, the long back muscles of the right are strained. Uh, jerk reflex is reduced. There is pronounced tenderness of the paravertebral points. Straight leg raise test is positive in the right. What additional tests should be performed in the first place? So first of all, what is the diagnosis here? The diagnosis here is uh, disc herniation or other names for it you can find in croc lumbosacral radiculopathy. It's the intervertebral disc, which is between the vertebra. This, this is the intervertebral disc between the vertebra. If it gets outside of its place, it can press on the nerves, right? When it's pressed on the nerves, these nerves are nerves that go to the leg, to the buttocks area, to the thigh, and it can cause pain in the leg, uh, decrease motor uh, functions, decrease reflexes, the same things that were mentioned in the question, right? Um, straight leg test, it means that pain increase when lifting a straight uh, a leg like this, the straight leg when the, when the doctor tries to lift it, like more than this, uh, if there is pain. So these are all signs of uh, disc herniation, intervertebral disc herniation, getting it out of place and pressing, compressing a nerve. Um, what is the diagnosis? Diagnosis, first of all, you should do x-ray of the spinal column, and this is what you should do in first place, radiography of the spinal column. Um, and there is another question, let's read it right now. As a result of load lifting, women develop pain in the lumbar region, the buttocks, and the thigh, and the foot, so the same thing, after lifting something, the disc got out of its place and pressed on the nerve, and produced these symptoms, and they tell you positive leg sign, the straight leg sign we spoke about. What examination method would be most effective for specification of the diagnosis of, of L5 root? They mean that this uh, discs, okay, they are named by the uh, number of the vertebra. So for example, this is L5 S1. So how we know that the L5 root is the one that is compressed, okay? Then so we need now specification, we need more clear picture, right? Uh, X-ray can give you in general if there is disc or not, but more clear picture, more uh, specification of how much exactly there is herniation by millimeters, then we can do this by MRI, right? MRI. So uh, these types of questions can get confusing. Why is here uh, X-ray and why is there MRI? They are the same diagnosis, but you need to uh, pay attention to what they're asking for confirmation specification, CT or MRI. In the first place, you do X-ray. The last question we have today is easy. It's a 68-year-old man complains of inability to urinate for a day. So he has urinary retention. Uh, on attempt of urinary bladder catheterization, there was detected a stricture in the urethra. So. So in, this, in the case there is no urination, we can use a catheter that gets through the urethra, right? Uh, like this. This is a normal bladder catheter that goes through the urethra, right? And goes to the urinary bladder to get the urine outside. This is, of course, a uh, woman's uh, bladder, but anyway, it's just... Uh, not like the question, it's a man, but uh, it's the same thing in the woman and men, uh, urethra and then urinary bladder uh, catheter, <coughs> right? So what they found in, the, in that, uh, it's called ure urethra bladder catheterization, but what they found in this uh, catheter is that there is a stricture in the urethra. Uh, there is, stricture means like a constriction, like an area that is like constricted here, that means that she, they cannot use a bladder catheterization because there's an area that is uh, closed. They can enter the catheter into the bladder. So what we should do in this case, they use cystostomy. So in this case, the bladder is full with 
uh, urine and the patient has it for one day so we need to get this urine outside as soon as possible so what we do is to take and make an incision from the skin into the bladder the bladder is called cyst this is called incision to the bladder cysto stomy and we make an opening and we make a drainage from there this is called trocar cystostomy right another name for it you can find in crop questions epicystostomy cystostomy suprapubic bladder cap tap catheter they all refer to the same thing we, when we cannot do normal urethral catheterization we can do uh, cystostomy in case of urethral strictures tumors or prostate hypercases uh, so anyway anything that can obstruct the normal uh, urethral catheter uh, pathway so this was surgery based uh, explanation of some questions and as last i want to announce our, about our course with crocology that includes the explanation of croc2 booklets the same way we explain these bases so if you like these videos make sure to check our course which starts from january next year and for more videos make sure to follow this channel